extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, or ESWAL for short, for your ureteral and kidney stones, what you need to know to be prepared for your surgery. Let's first talk about what is ESWAL. ESWAL, or extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, uses shockwaves to break a kidney or ureteral stone into small pieces so that it can then move easily through the urinary tract and pass from the body. Shockwaves are used to break up kidney stones so that they break into small pieces and pass through the urinary tract. Let's review a little bit of the anatomy of a urinary tract. Stones can form, unfortunately, anywhere in the urinary tract, but the most common places are kidney, ureter, and bladder, as well as useful for those stones that are located in the upper ureter or the kidney. Indications for Eswell include symptomatic stones of the kidney or ureter and stones that are obstructing the kidney, ureter, or both. There are some alternatives to Eswell. You can consider conservative management, treatment with medications that may facilitate stone passage, as well as pain medication. A procedure called ureteroscopy, which involves looking up from the bladder using a long, thin telescope to either break up the stone or remove it with the basket. No incision is required. Percutaneous nephrolithotomy, which is involving directly looking into the kidney through a tube to fragment the stones and remove the pieces. This is done through a small incision in the back or open stone surgery. In deciding if you're a candidate for Eswell, your physician will discuss all options with you. The decision for the procedure is usually based on several variables. Where the stone is located in the urinary tract, how dense or hard the stone is on imaging, the body habitus and size of the patient, available resources for Eswell, and the patient's type and degree of symptoms. Eswell is a very safe procedure, but it does have a few risks. Infection, bleeding, injury to the ureter or kidney, worsening kidney function, diabetes, hypertension, recurrent stone formation, inability to pass the fragments of the stone causing pain, needing to have a urinary stent placed to help passage of the stone, or additional medical or surgical management are all risks of Eswell. The procedure is usually performed in your urologist's office or in the ambulatory surgery center. These are usually located adjacent to the office or in very close proximity. And these centers are specifically designed for outpatient procedures to be performed. Some patients may need their procedure performed in a hospital because of underlying medical conditions. So the procedure itself involves bringing the patient into the procedure room and having them lay down on the table. The patient will have anesthesia and then x-ray or fluoroscopy will be used to locate the stone in the urinary tract. Occasionally, ultrasound is also used to help locate the stone. Shock waves will then be focused on the stone, and the stone will be monitored during the procedure with fluoroscopy to see if it's breaking up and fragmenting successfully. After the procedure, you will be brought to the recovery room where you'll wake up. You may have some redness or bruising on your side or back from the shock waves. You'll be given prescriptions for medicine that will include potentially antibiotics for a day or two, pain medication, as well as medicines that will help force the stone out, such as Flomax or Tamsulosin. You may also require stool softeners if you're taking oral pain medication. You will need another x-ray before your follow-up visit with your surgeon and possibly an ultrasound at your follow-up visit. You'll be given all these instructions as to when and where you should follow up. After the procedure, you should expect to see blood in the urine that could last a few days to weeks. It's really important to drink plenty of fluids to help flush out the blood and help facilitate passage of the stone. You may have mild burning with urination that can last a few days. Tylenol usually is enough to help with this, but you'll also be given potentially a narcotic pain medication if you have severe pain. Most patients can return to work after a few days after the procedure. You will likely pass the stone fragments, and it's important to strain your urine and bring any fragments into the office during your post-op appointment to be given to your doctor for analysis. It's very important to call your doctor if you experience a fever greater than 101.5 after the procedure. If you have chills, nausea, vomiting, severe pain that you can't get under control with pain medication, constipation, even with using stool softeners, or excessive bleeding. The procedure will take about 30 to 45 minutes on average, but every case is different. 
it's important to arrive at least an hour prior to the procedure. You'll usually go home that day and you'll need to have somebody both drive you home and stay with you that night. We will coordinate and help schedule your procedure. Many of these procedures will be done in an ambulatory surgery center in your area. Some patients may need to be scheduled to have the procedure done in the hospital, and you'll be contacted with the surgical date and instructions of where and when to report for your procedure. The pre-authorization process is essential, and we will communicate with your insurance company to determine your coverage and if any co-payments or deductibles are owed. We'll provide you with an estimate of any charges that you may incur. All charges are due prior to the procedure, and we do offer payment plans if necessary. In terms of preparing for surgery, you will need to see your primary care physician to obtain a physical exam, blood work, and maybe an EKG. We'll provide a list of tests that you will need for surgical clearance. It's important not to eat or drink anything after midnight the night before the procedure. You may need to stop aspirin or blood thinners depending on your physician's instructions, but please never stop these products without discussing first with your primary care physician. Please bring a list of your current medications with you to your procedure, and you'll need to arrive about one hour before the scheduled surgery. It's important to have somebody drive you that will need to be there waiting the entire time and then drive you home after the procedure. In terms of urinary stone disease, you may be at risk for making more stones. You should discuss with your urologist additional workup and therapy to help prevent this from happening. All stone formers are greatly encouraged to drink large amounts of fluids. We do hope that your procedure goes well and that you have a speedy recovery. We greatly appreciate your feedback regarding your procedure because we're always trying to improve the care that we provide our patients. If you have any questions regarding your procedure or your recovery, please contact your doctor. Thank you.